He's Richo, best known as the numbers man and the kingmaker in the heyday of the Hawke and Keating governments. It's been 24 years since Graham Richardson strode those corridors of power, and for much of that time, he's been locked in a battle with a recurring chondrosarcoma, a nasty bone cancer in the pelvis. When the cancer started to gain the upper hand last year, Richo agreed to undergo a radical procedure pioneered here in Australia. It was touch and go for a while, and we nearly lost him a couple of times along the way. But one year on, he's still here, a man with a mission. I get no oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll feel that one for a few days. Here's a question. Who's the toughest? The blokes on the field. Red carpet. The red carpet in there, not just for me, I think. <laughs> or the former politician with the walking frame watching on. Go, 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 go. Go. The answer is Graham Richardson. Yeah. He is in a league of his own. Yeah. How are we doing? Well, so far we're holding our own. The hard man of Labor politics, by all rights, should be dead. You're the old age. Certainly not here tonight, watching his beloved dragons do battle with the sharks. But I had sex down there, but I, I can't use them anymore, mate. He says he'd rather watch with the mob, but tonight Graham Richardson has to make do with the convenience of the chairman's lounge, where privilege still keeps him in good company. You want how are you, Graham? Oh, John, how are you? I'm very well. Yeah. Yeah. You got Wally looking after you. I'm there. Yeah, I got, I got Wally. No, he'll be in no trouble. He's a dangerous man. Yeah, he is a dangerous man. Being at a Dragons game with his son Darcy and his wife Amanda... Yes, we're matching. We're, indeed we are. <laughs> ...is as close to heaven as Richo expects to get. <laughs> that he's here at all is amazing. Look, you can't do anything about it. It's just your lot in life. It happens. So if it happens, well, you just got to put up with it. I've known you on and off for 30 years. I didn't realise you were such a philosophical and stoic person. It's not in my nature to go down easily and succumb. I, I think you've got to stand up and fight. He might deny it, but these days that old Richo irascibility oh, is a good a, thing. I don't like cats, but I've somehow fallen yeah, in love with this one. You, but cats know if you don't like them. Don't yeah, they? they do. A strength he uses to stop himself surrendering to a broken body. Richo, let's go back to the beginning of this unpleasant business you've been through. When did you first learn that you were not indestructible? I had my first operation for this chondrosarcoma in 1999. Chondrosarcoma is a technical term for a rare and recurring bone cancer in his abdomen, which has been trying, but so far failing, to kill Graham Richardson for almost 20 years. I wasn't sure if this was a vengeful God getting even with me for all the evil deeds that I've, that I've done over the years. He's a tough bastard, eh? Professor Michael Solomon is the Australian pioneer of one of medicine's most radical plumbing procedures, the pelvic exenteration. What it means is they rip your guts out, that's, that's what it means. In politics, Richo's mantra was, whatever it takes. A powerful cabinet minister, ruthless numbers man and deal maker. But faced with his own mortality, he had to accept a devil of a deal. In return for life, Graham traded his pubic bone, his bowel, urinary bladder, prostate and rectum, and he had to accept a life with colostomy and urinary diversion bags. Mesh holds together what's left inside. So the tumour was involving the whole left half of his pelvis, which led to quite significant pain and distress. Without the operation, what was his life expectancy? He would have died from infections any time from six months to one or two years. Richo's operation took 17 hours and his heart stopped three times on the table. I reckon I've proven that uh, well, I'm very hard to kill. No. Graham was, of course, unaware of the close calls in surgery, just as he was on the other two occasions in the weeks that followed when Amanda and nine-year-old son Darcy were called to his bedside to say their goodbyes. It's horrible. Darcy's crying, he's hysterical. He's going, no, 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 Dad. Amanda says evil never dies, and uh, I've, I should have gone, but I didn't. So, and now that it's over, I think the recovery is way too slow. Mate, they overpromise what it's going to be like when you get out. They never told me I'd still be suffering from some of the things I'm suffering from more than a year on. Um, that might have 
had me more soberly think about what I was doing. You're not a religious man, are you? No. In those really dark days, did you consider just getting out? Yeah, I did. Um, I did. But this was just an academic proposition. You didn't try to end things as well. Well, um, no, I, I, I haven't tried to end things and I, I won't um, now. Why not? But there were, well, Darcy for a start. Are they looking good, your mum and dad? Yeah. Without a doubt, his boy Darcy is a chip off the old block. A real richo mini-me. You're a clever kid, but we'd expect that because you have clever parents. Yes. Dad especially. <laughs> <laughs> you were so quick in your own dinner. OK, cut. <laughs> Do you want to go into politics? Not really. Well, Dad like... wants me to. I want to be Prime Minister. If I hang around long enough, I could manage it. So I could get in there. Yeah. Would you like to be Prime Minister, as your dad hopes you might be one day? Um, no, I want to be a creative writer. Whatever Darcy's future holds, Richo is flat out working to get him there. A typical Monday starts well before sunup. It's 4.30am when his indispensable helper, driver Peter Saba, lets himself in to help Richo start another busy day. How's that? Are we centred? Not quite. Which way? A bit to your left. Good mate, thanks. Then it's across town to the Channel 9 studios for his weekly Today Show segment. Wow, look at the cat drag today. <laughs> How are you, mate? We are inspired every Monday morning when he shuffles in. She Make right. Australia great again. Oh, God help us. Tell us, it's not a bad joint anyway, I reckon. After the show, it's home to collect Darcy for school drop-off. Did you sleep well? Mum, let me have an extra hour. See you later, mate. You'll be good. I shall. Then back home and back to work. How many words, Graham? Oh, be 600, mate. In print, Richo's an old school stylist, dashing off three handwritten columns a week. If all this seems tough, be assured Richo couldn't do it alone. Amanda, we've got a column done here, ready for you to type. It's a case of behind every great man, there's a woman. And in the sanctuary of Richo's home, that woman is his second wife, Amanda. I would really appreciate it. <laughs> She's a girl from Townsville in far north Queensland, now down in the big smoke, keeping the impaired but unstoppable Richo machine on the road. Amanda, 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 yep. Amanda. Yes, 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 yes. Hmm, it's, um, it's a hard geek, but someone has to do it. And, you know, it's my job. They've known each other for 20 years, been together for 10, and married now for five. Amanda, can I have a toasted ham sandwich and a cup of tea, please? Is he fully appreciative no. of everything you do? No, no I am, absolutely. No, you're not. I mean, you know, I dress him, I put his shoes and socks on. The only thing I don't do is brush his teeth for him. She is a wonderful don't woman. Don't tell her that. Thank you, Charles. It's very kind of you. It is very difficult looking after <laughs> Graham, as you have seen. It's, um, it's a full-time job. It's worse than bringing home a baby because he talks back. I think you're getting smarter over the years. I'm getting dumber. What do you think? I think you're going to be in big trouble shortly. <laughs> Graham's very good at giving orders, not taking orders. And he's always been like that. That's right. She's a keeper, isn't she? Yeah, well, there's nothing about that. But um, she's also a very hard taskmaster. That's right. There's not a nurse in sight. It's all Amanda. Is that love or duty? Um, oh, a combination of both, I hope. I have many job titles. Many. Along with everything else, Amanda has become expert in tending the wound dressings that even a year on from surgery need to be done two or three times a day. It's a grim labour of love. You're not the man she fell in love with. Does she resent that, do you think? I'm really um, sort of an 80-year-old now in a 67-year-old's body. And she didn't expect me to be 80 this quickly, so... No. It's pretty hard. I mean, obviously, the, the old cue was on the rack, <laughs> um, so to speak. 
uh, but we thought we'd, we'd place an ad and call for a replacement. He's looking he for, is joking, isn't he? He, he is joking. Um, I hope he's joking. Um, <laughs> you know, but Charles, it's just another thing off my to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> what keeps him going, do you think? Doggedness and Darcy. The two days we had to wait... Look, just what we I reckon that the secret is A, keep working and B, keep going out. So I make myself go out to lunch two or three times a week, dinner maybe once a week. I just make sure I'm out. Cheers to Richard. His Canberra days are behind him. The best spring rolls in the world. But old habits, like old politicians apparently, die hard. And Richo is still the master of the long lunch. So today's a lunch of the survivors. <laughs> <laughs> there are plenty of us, mate. There are plenty of us. It's a weekly ritual with mates. He's had more bits taken out than a Vatican sex novel, so... Uh... <laughs> Oh, good to see you, buddy. Great, mate. Thank you very much. But these days, Richo toasts with soda water. What's it like to get together with your mates? Oh, I love this. I mean, this, this is me. This is absolutely this is, yeah. me. On the go, round the clock, it's a frenetic life for a man with a severe mobility problem. We wondered if you might be available for a panel. Oh. Yeah, OK. Oh, what time? Somehow he manages his day with a few carefully planned naps. This is Richo. Surfacing refreshed as here to front his weeknight television show on Sky. A terrific show tonight. Do you miss politics? Oh, I haven't missed it from the first day. You turn on the uh, Senate and the House of Reps question times and you look at it and it's such a play acting fast. You say to yourself, thank God I don't have to go through that dribble anymore. He's still in for a long recuperation. But in the days I spent with him, it seems that even when he drives himself to exhaustion, there is no medication that revives Richo quite as effectively as the television lights, the camera and the attention. His friends say he's much better than he was. Mm, much better. And isn't there a medical expectation he'll continue to get better? I still have my fingers crossed. Yeah. Old age isn't granted to everyone, and it's a privilege to grow old. Um, you know, you finish up with two bags, and, and that's awfully uncomfortable and hard to manage, and at times very depressing. But also, you, you realise that around it, you, live, you still live a pretty reasonable life. And I reckon my life's OK. I'm feeling a bit weary, but I'm OK. I still got to write the bloody column if you'd yeah, shut right, up. I'll, I'll get, get on, I'll get on the job. Mate. I'll leave with that old Australian expression. When I was a kid, mate, you wouldn't be dead for quids. <laughs> That's right. That's, my father used to use that one all the time. You wouldn't be dead for quids. And I wouldn't be. Um, I want to see Darcy grow. I want to see him prosper. Um, I want to see him a man. And so that means I've got to live to a ripe old age. And uh, that's exactly what I intend to do.